Hi everyone, I'm Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Andover, Minnesota here in the US. And I am here to bring you another online paper crafting class. Right now I'm broadcasting live on Facebook. It is August 28th, Wednesday, August 28th at uh, 11 a.m. Central Time. So checking in to see who's with me today. I just loaded comments in my app here to see if I can catch anybody joining me. Hopefully I'm in the right space. <laughs> Anyways, um, the beauty of live broadcasting is that we are able to interact. So if you have a question while I am broadcasting, please, you know, post it, let me know uh, your thoughts. Sometimes people add comments that help other viewers to know some other great ideas. Good morning, Don. Good morning, Jean. Hello, you guys. This is great. People are chiming in. I must be in the right spot. Awesome. You know what I did? I looked back and I said to myself, how many times did I get to broadcast this summer? Um, I had scheduled eight broadcasts, which isn't a lot, and I was only able to keep four of them. Our summer was crazy. So I'm very grateful that I'm able to hop on today. <laughs> Yay! And I also added uh, another broadcast for next week, and I'm, I'm planning not to have a lapse in time now that the kids are going back next week. Good morning, Irene. Good morning, Deborah. Good morning, Amy. Awesome. Some familiar names are coming back. This is so great that you've come and joined me. <laughs> Yay! Especially after only broadcasting four times this summer. That's crazy. Anyways, um, I have a really, really great card to share with you today, and I have some other versions of it too. And this time, yay, Linda made it. <laughs> this time I'm going to share with you uh, the three other versions beforehand, so you'll kind of have a hint as to what I'm going to be creating. I'll also share the supplies, and um, uh, oh, I'm going to show the prizes too. So make sure that you're commenting, saying hi to me. I love it when you guys comment. Hi, Eileen. Um, it's good to see familiar names and um, makes me feel like I've got a class right in front of me. I love to teach, so this is great. You're with me. And by the way, if you're watching this on YouTube, remember I said at the beginning this is a Facebook Live broadcast, so you're seeing a recording, but please feel free to comment even if you're watching it on YouTube or my blog later. I would love to hear your thoughts. Okay, today I'm going to demonstrate a shutter card. So let's, um, let's bring it down to my table here. Oh, I have to do something else because my face is too big. Hang on, we're gonna put we're gonna put me down a little bit further in the corner. There we go. I'm gonna show you some. Um, actually, I'm gonna show you the prizes first. Okay. So there are two of these stamp sets that I have now. It may look familiar to you. Some of you may not recognize this stamp set at all, though. This stamp set is only online and in our Inspire Creativity mini catalog. It's a mini catalog that um, demonstrators can take from party to party or event to event. And it, it helps a newer crafter to not be overwhelmed. That mini catalog looks like this. Again, it's called Experience Creativity and it has all kinds of fun goodies in here, including some things that you won't see in the big annual catalog. And um, as you can see in this portion, uh, there is the stamp set called Magnolia Blooms. It's not the exact same stamp set, that we have, hi Glenda from Iowa, it's not the same stamp set that we have in the annual catalog. So here is the one from the annual catalog in the Magnolia Bloom, or the Magnolia Lane Suite. That's that one, okay? It's a little bit bigger, a little bit more detail, um, some more um, sentiments in it, but this one in the beginning brochure, which is what I kind of nickname this thing, it's a little more affordable, it's um, easier to color in. We're gonna be working with that today, and thus I purchased a couple extra stamp sets for the prizes. So one of you will get um, a prize today, and then the next time I broadcast next week, we'll draw for a second winner. That gives lots of you plenty of time, even if you're watching the replay, to comment so that you can get in on the prize drawing. And that's how you get in on the prize drawing, by the way. I do a comment picker thing, and you get to um, you get to have your name randomly drawn. So this is one of the cards. Let me zoom in a bit here so you can see it. This is one of the cards that I created. Um, I created this based on a beautiful card that my sister demonstrator, Carol Rosenberg, shared with us this past weekend um, at my Upline, Uplines event. And she walked us through a shutter card. This is very similar to her version. I use different colors on the papers and um, like the designer paper and the cardstock. But I know, don't you? I love it too, Christy. The Magnolia Blooms stamp set is amazing. Um, or I mean the, well, 
The Good Morning Magnolia is also amazing too. The whole suite is amazing. But this is just a belly band, so I'm going to share with you how to make that. Um, I colored this image with blends markers, so you can see uh, there's the Mossy Meadow, Petal Pink, a little bit of Daffodil Delight is thrown in there. Uh, so you can see that there's some coordinating colors with the colors of the kit. And then it opens like a cupboard. Um, so this is how you watch this. This is so cool. It's like the shutter of a camera. It's so amazing. I've made these just a couple times, and I don't think I've ever done a video to show how to make these. So when Carol shared her version of this card, I'm like, oh my gosh, that is totally up my alley. I need to share that too. So thank you, Carol, for sharing your version. Mine, um, again, it's a little different. I did not use dyes. She used circle dyes on hers, but I wanted to eliminate um, any die cutting type of techniques because I want people to be able to dive right into this if you don't have the um, if you don't have the die cutting machines or the dies. Now I found that this one closed a little bit tougher than um, I wanted it to and so I worked with the measurements a bit so I adjusted them slightly. Um, no offense Carol. <laughs> just it didn't work with my with with using punches versus dies it worked better oh and another thing with this one too um, is I use the punch from the top down so that I could get this centered uh, the problem with that though is that it left very little space at the very very top here for dimensionals and or um, you know the lift the lifting kind of adhesive and on this one at the top I use these so uh, these foam strips, they're great for, you know, a straight line of foam adhesive. You could also use mini dimensionals. So let me tell you here, this one was, let's see, let me find my ruler. Hang on. There it is. This one measured, um, I think it was three inches across on the white. Yes. But it would have been better had it measured three and a quarter inches across on the white because then I could have brought the punch in from the side. So on the next one, and we'll just set this aside over here. <laughs> on the next one, this card here, so this is another version of a shutter, uh, shutter card. I want to call it shutter fly cards. <laughs> shutter fold card. Um, so the belly band, this one's using the stamp set I'm going to use today. It also has some of that coordinating petal pink uh, striped organdy ribbon. It's so beautiful. And so I brought the punch into the center, but I did that not by widening this cardstock so I could shove it all the way in, but I did that by taking and just making a template. So I punched out our two inch circle punch onto a piece of cardstock and I laid it over the top. And then I used that as a guide so I, I did a little um, pencil line in there and then shoved it in and made sure that I could punch right in the center. So then I didn't have to worry about my dimensionals being too narrow here at the top or the bottom. So I have regular dimensionals just like this at the top and the bottom, okay? I'm giving you these hints ahead of time because as I do the rest of the card, I want, to, I want you to understand why I went in different directions because shutter cards are very sensitive. Every measurement has to rely on other measurements. Uh, depending on what supplies you're using. So the flaps in here also I had to cut down a bit. I made them a quarter of an inch shorter because that way they collapsed easily without having to poke into each other on the sides. So when you bring those flaps underneath there together, my corners were hitting the other side too, too hard and it was causing this not to close easily. So these measurements were great. But then I didn't want to do the tracing thing. So I made my section just a little bit wider so that I could just bring the punch in from the side and not have to worry about a template. So I made a belly band for that one. It's a little bit simpler, but it has some fun embellishments on it. Thanks you guys. I'm loving the comments coming in. Hi Jeanette. <laughs> and so this Shutterfly card, I love the whole black base one, by the way, looks like this. And I love it when this part matches the inside cardstock. I'm not gonna show you that on the sample I'm doing today because I want you to see that, you know, as I'm making it, I want you to see the difference. But ideally, the shutter, if it matches the base cardstock, then it's not as noticeable. So you'll wanna be doing that, okay? Hi, Faith, how are you? Glad you're back. 
So I've got some of those fun little accents in here too. This piece is wider, so then I just had to shove the punch all the way in and it centered it completely because this is three and a quarter inches wide here. Okay, um, oh, and another thing is you'll notice that you can't see the dimensionals as much in there because I'm using a product that's gonna come out in the holiday catalog and it's called Black Dimensionals. Woohoo! So on September 4th, we can all get the combo pack of the Black Dimensionals. They're mini size and regular size in one pack. And they look like this. And then you can see there, as you peel off the backing, they're, they're black, completely black all the way through. Okay, so we've set those aside because we want to dive in and start crafting. Um, let me bring you to the measurements. Oops, wrong way, Rachel. Sorry, hang on. Um, get that off, get that on. You guys can't see what I'm doing in the background. There we go. <laughs> There's the measurements and um, supplies that you'll need. So the Magnolia Shutterfold card. Oops, hi, hi. there we go. There, that looks nicer. Take a screenshot if you'd like, or come visit my blog on Saturday, this Saturday, and I'll be sharing these measurements, these supplies, the video again, all of that will show up on my blog. My blog address is stampyourartout.com um, in case you didn't know. Okay, so I'm gonna take that back off. Let us go to, <laughs> let us go to the desktop. Okay, so if you took a screenshot of those items, and I'm, I'm not going over them in detail this time, did you notice that? But I kind of talked about them already. So if you took a screenshot, then you'll be able to kind of follow along with what I'm doing with your screenshot. If not, again, you can go back and watch the video or you can, you can uh, come visit again on Saturday at my blog. So we're gonna shove our cardstock in. This is Petal Pink cardstock. I'm using Petal Pink and Mossy Meadow as the main colors because black would have made the whole screen go wacko on me as we found out in the past, right? We don't wanna have issues with lighting. We're gonna go ahead and cut this in half at five and a half because our cardstock is 11 inches this way. So we're cutting our cardstock the way you normally would for a card. Uh-oh, freezer burn computer. <laughs> what was that? Okay, I'm, it already passed, your comment passed, but I hope that you're, I hope everything's okay. Sometimes when I see, you know, exclamation marks in the comments or something, it catches my eyes and I go over there and I'm like, oh, I hope nothing's going wrong because we've had issues sometimes, right? Okay, so now I'm going to score, but I'm not scoring in half. Normally you'd score it in half at four and a quarter inches for just a regular card that opens up like this. But we're gonna make it a cupboard door type of opening. So we wanna take four and a half, or four and a quarter, which is half of this, and half that again. So half of that is two and an eighth. Two and an eighth inches. And if we zoom in, maybe that will help you guys out here too. Two and an eighth inches, okay? So you can see where that measurement comes to on your, your cutter. And we're gonna score, we're gonna flip it around, and we're gonna score again at two and an eighth inches. And then we're gonna fold those in, and we're gonna use our bone folder to just give it a good crease on either side. We wanna make sure that when these two meet in the middle that they're not gonna overlap. So be careful of that. Make sure that you're scoring pretty accurately, and you can always fix it if it's like a minor amount of inches off. You can always fix it by just making sure the edges meet here and then really giving it a stronger crease with that bone folder, okay? <laughs> Thank you, Mary Jo. All right, awesome. So um, now we've got the base. Now we wanna take some of our pretty cards, or pretty papers. Oh, I gotta show you the papers. So let's zoom back out for a minute. The pretty papers from the Magnolia Lane Designer Series Pack. So you can see all of these beautiful sheets coming in here. There, it's made up of 12 sheets, two of each of the double-sided designs, okay? So here are six. Again, you're gonna double all of this. And then the flip side, because they're double-sided, it's a little more um, subdued, but we're using the non-subdued. <laughs> We're gonna pull in this piece here, and we're just gonna slice it at um, one and seven eighths inches all the way down. So we have a little sliver of it, okay? One and seven eighths. And if you need to know where that is on the cutter, let's zoom in, Rachel. 
make it easier for them to see. One and seven eighths is an eighth inch right before the two. Okay, so we've got that. And now we're gonna rotate it and we're gonna cut that at five and a quarter inches. There we go. And five and a quarter. Now these papers have been very popular as Cheryl pointed out. She goes, this paper is beautiful. It has been, this has been one of the most popular suites in our catalog this year so far. And, um, and so you probably have seen tons of samples with this, but th th that's just natural because it's so awesome. So hopefully you're not getting sick of this. I just love this paper so much. I've already cut this piece. This piece is three inches wide by um, five and a quarter. And then this one is, like I said earlier, this is the white base on this piece. That one's uh, three and a quarter inches wide. And it's also the same height as the card, so five and a half. So we'll zoom out just a tad because now we want to see everything. Okay. Oh, you're welcome, Jenny. She, she said, thank you for showing us on the ruler. All right, so we're going to take these two pieces first. We'll just flip them over and add some snail adhesive. Snail adhesive is nice. It just, you know, push it down, pull, push it down, pull. It's a really quick way to add adh uh, adhesive to the back of a piece of cardstock. Um, keep in mind that if you do live in more of a humid climate that you'll want to use your bone folder or even just your finger or whatever and just kind of help to rub it in. That's called burnishing and it just reinforces the bond of the adhesive. We'll do the same thing with this piece but this time we're just going to put adhesive in the corners and maybe at the top and bottom because I want the middle part to stay free of adhesive. So we'll tape that down and give that a good rub. And then we're gonna grab our two inch circle punch. Hello from Ohio, thanks, hi Fran. We're just gonna punch, uh, push it all the way in and you can see that with that perfect length there, it, it'll cut it right in the middle. So we're gonna cut that right in the center. So sad, we're gonna get rid of that beautiful flower. The good thing is we don't, we don't have to um, waste that because there's no adhesive on the back. So I can take and use that either on this card or another card later. So, and we'll also use this piece, so I'm gonna set that aside for a second. Okay, let's work on the, um, the stamping for a minute. So we're gonna take out our stamp set. Again, this one's called Magnolia Blooms, and I've already got my image mounted on my uh, clear block. These are clear stamps, so it's really, really awesome because you can just take and stamp it where you want it to go. But here we're just doing it randomly on a scrap piece of Whisper White. And I'm using Whisper White thick cardstock because I find that blends take better on our thick cardstock than it does on our regular. And now we're gonna bring in the blends. The blends markers are the Mossy Meadow Combo Pack, the um, Soft Suede, which I'm not gonna use on this card. I did use it on my other one with the larger bloom that had a stem. Petal Pink, um, Daffodil Delight Light, and I am going to use the Color Lifter. The Color Lifter um, helps to correct things. It pushes the color in, but it also um, helps to make kind of a soft edge on really, really light colors. So let's zoom in again. I love that I can work the zoom in really easily now. <laughs> okay, so let's start with the Mossy Meadow. This is my favorite way of using blends markers. Blends markers are, yes, the flower on the belly band is awesome. Um, the the um, blends markers are alcohol-based markers, and so when you are coloring with them, they don't dry completely right away, and they allow you to blend with other colors or other shades of the same color quickly, okay? Or even, you know, over time. You can, like, this is not completely dry here. So I can come in and I can use my darker one and add a little bit of shading at the base of the leaf where it's closer into the shadows of the flower. Um, and then I can take my other marker, my light one again. So I like to do light, dark, light. I just think it's easier. And then I just kind of squiggle right in the area where the two colors met and it helps to decrease the, um, the sharpness of the light and dark. So I'm not going to show you on the leaves because that is a, sm a much smaller um, image right now, but I will show you with the petals. So I'll hold that up to the camera. Actually, you know what? 
when I finish this leaf here, this set of leaves, I'm gonna hold it up because you will be able to see the difference between the ones that have the dark added and the just the light. So you can see that these just had light on the end and then I added dark and it blended out. So you get a really nice effect. So let's just add a little bit more dark to the base around here and let's hold that up so you can see that there's a definite line between the dark and the light. And then when we come in with the light again and kind of scribble right between the two colors, it helps to blend them really nicely. That worked, that worked on the bigger leaves. The smaller ones here were so tiny, I didn't think you'd be able to see it. Now on this one, um, I'm gonna start with the dark because uh, we're gonna go dark, light, and then color lifter. And so I'm gonna start with the darkest of the petal pink colors and I'm gonna just color a scribble of that color really close to where the leaf, or the petal, I'm sorry, where the petal kind of starts um, coming out from the flower. So just a tad of pink right in there, okay? Then I'm gonna take our light one and I'm going to bring that color a little bit further out. And this time as I'm coloring, I can see that it's blending with the dark one in there but it's also a much lighter version. And then, and this works best with light colors, like the light pool party, the light daffodil, the light um, petal pink. Then what you do is you take and you use this color to, oh, something's going on. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know if you guys can hear the little beeps in the background. Um, then you take and you use the color lifter and you squiggle right next to the edge of that light petal pink. And it is the most subtle, soft flow of pink into white. It's just so pretty. So there is our colored flower without the yellow. Got to get the yellow in there. The yellow, I just use one color because it's so, um, it's so, it's tiny in there. You don't really see a lot anyway. So we just needed to add a little touch of yellow in there. So now we have our color on our flower. We're just going to fussy cut. And fussy cutting is not something you need to be afraid of. The thing that I do with fussy cutting is I always try to go a little bit out from the edge, which you'll see with dies too. So if you're die cutting, the dies typically do not go right to the edge of the image either. Um, and that helps to account for any kind of lines on your stamp that may not be as um, straight or, or stark or, you know, they may have a like fuzziness to them, but like even in there, there's not a complete line. So if you go a little ways out, like a sixteenth of an inch, um, that helps to create a really attractive cut piece. And you'll notice that I'm not really turning my, um, my scissors as much, but I'm turning my hand. I'm gonna get this out of the way here. I'm turning my hand more than the scissors. So, um, I'm sorry, my hand, my paper. I'm turning my paper, oops, and I'm right over or underneath my face there, sorry turning my paper more than I am the scissors. So I selected this stamp image knowing that I could talk all the way through it. Are you guys proud of me? <laughs> Are you like, hurry up? Okay, so there we go. There's our flower. Hopefully that stayed within camera. I'm gonna zoom out again. Okay, now we wanna work on the shutter. So the shutter pieces, as I mentioned before, have to be a little bit shorter than what I first started out with. So we're gonna make those shutter pieces three and three quarter inches wide by three inches um, tall, okay? And then you wanna score in, and I only scored in on this one, three eighths of an inch from one end, all right? I think I did the measurements wrong, oops. I'm gonna to have to change that on my measurements. I wrote one half inch, it's three eighths of an inch. And that helped with the width of this piece. It had to be three eighths of an inch, and it's, it's just weird. Math. You know, it had to, it had to be that way. Okay, so now I'm going to fold that right there, just so you can see where those creases are. Okay, that's what your pieces are going to look like. And there's no top or bottom. You could put your sticky, uh, your tear and tape, sorry, adhesive on either side, um, but the tear and tape is going to be the part that connects to the sides of the inside of your card. First, we want to make the shutter portion of it though, and so we are going to measure two inches down and a half of an inch in. So what I'm doing is I'm placing it in my trimmer like this 
<laughs> Thank you, Jeanette. I'm placing it in my trimmer like this, and I have measurements that here, we'll put this paper under here. You can see on this part or the um, arm of the trimmer where that holds the blade, and I'm gonna bring it up to the two inch mark. So you can see it's right at the two inch mark. This is my cutting blade. And this is over at one and a half inches, which means this side is also one and a half. I'm right at the middle point of three inches. And what I do is I'm just gonna press it down. So I'm marking a spot there without having to do real hard measurements with pencils and rulers going in different directions. So now I have a little spot there and I'm not sure if you can see it on camera. I can see it thankfully, but it's right there. And I'm gonna take my long bladed scissors. The shorter ones are not gonna aim as well. So you'll wanna take some kind of long bladed scissors and you can do them both at the same time if you are confident like me or you can do one at a time. But I'm just cutting right up to that point. And then um, because I'm right-handed and it's easier for me to go this way, I'm flipping it over and I'm gonna cut again right to that point. And so now I have the perfect V size that will work with this card. All right, <laughs> we're going on 30 minutes almost, Rachel, hurry it up. Okay, so now we gotta take these pieces and place them into the card. Um, this piece will need to, let's stamp that really quickly. It's sliding away from me. There it is. Okay, and we need the stamp for that puppy, and it's right next to me. We're going to stamp that again in the Memento Tuxedo Black, which is what you want to use with blends, by the way. If you um, are new to blends markers, the alcohol-based markers, make sure that you're using the Memento um, Tuxedo Black, which is water-based, or you can use like just the regular classic pads, too. I used Early Espresso on my brownish card, and you can still do blends markers with this kind of ink. But don't use an alcohol or solvent-based ink like um, Stazon. Okay, let's place this, and we're not gonna stick it down yet, but let's just place that where we want it to go, and it's gonna be centered. It needs to be centered between the two creases here. Okay, so you'll see an even amount on each side. We're gonna flip this over. We're gonna take and add the sentiment to the inside like this. And it's always good to stamp it first because that way, if it's not straight, you don't have to worry about it, right? You can straighten it out as you add it. So we're just, sorry, I wanna make sure it's just straight. I gotta be like right over it. That looks good. Okay, so we'll press that down and good, that worked. Okay, now we're gonna keep this over the top of it just for one of these right now. You don't need to do it for both. Let's take some tear and tape adhesive and put this on the end like this. By the way, if your wish list is getting long, um, <laughs> you can order lots of product at a great price this month. Now through the end of August, you can get um, $155, up to $155 worth of stuff for just $99 plus tax, free shipping. I'll tell you about that in a minute. Okay, so what I've done is I've lined up the edge of the mossy meadow piece with where my fold is, where my crease is. Do you see that? And I've also kept this window over the top because I want our little Pac-Man looking thing in here to be centered. So now I'm gonna peel off the backing of this and I'm just gonna close this down on top and I can lift it up out of the way and I can bring this out of the way. Now I'm gonna rotate it in this direction and we're gonna do the same thing with this piece. Put some tear and tape adhesive on here. And <laughs> thanks for tagging somebody, Emily. <laughs> yes, I think you can tag people too. If you share this and you mention that you shared, um, you can get entered into the prize drawing too because you're commenting, right? So now we're gonna lay this down on here like that. So it's lined up with the other one and make sure it's right up to the crease and press it down. Super easy, you guys. Okay, so now we've got these little guys like that. Can you see that the way they're positioned? So this piece then just gets positioned over the top with dimensionals and I have a bunch. I have a ton as you guys know on my table. I'm getting some weird lighting on the side of my head. I'm sorry. It's so sunny out here but the sun was not shining on me <laughs> in that intensity when I first started the video so I didn't shut the window all the way. It's okay. I have something in the way anyways. I can't shut it all the way anyways. You guys are just going to have to deal with my glow. 
All right, we're gonna lay this right over the top so it's centered. Oh, and you know what? I, I think that sentiment might not be big enough, but that's okay, it still works. <laughs> you wanna make sure that it fits. You know what I bet I didn't do right? I bet I know what I didn't do right. You guys, oh my gosh. It's good to make mistakes on camera, even live, right? Um, okay, when you're doing this shutter piece here, it's better to go two inches in this way. All right, I'm gonna just show you that really quick. So, your piece is three and three quarter inches, right? This is what I should have done with the green. In fact, I'm gonna peel it off later and fix it. Um, <laughs> so then, two inches up from three and three quarters would be two and three quarters, one and three quarters. So this is where I should have pressed it. Oh, Rachel, Rachel, Rachel. <laughs> Whoops. Oh man. Okay. And then you cut into there and this piece, and I'm going to check it. That's why I'm, I'm doing this right now. I bet that's what I did. Cause when I was doing this live a while ago, you know, during this broadcast, I'm thinking, hmm, is it two inches that way or two inches the other way? Let's test it out. So we have that three, yes. <laughs> that would have shown more of the sentiment. So there you go. Measure the other direction, two inches up. Okay, we're done with that. <laughs> we're closing it up. Belly band time, belly band. Here we go. You're gonna take your one and a quarter inch strip um, by one and a quarter by 11 inch strip of cardstock, and you're just gonna wrap it. Don't score ahead of time. It's much easier with a thinner piece like this to just wrap it around. You can get it the right snugness based on your layers of cardstock that you have on your card. So belly bands always just measure uh, or get put the score lines or crease lines in there as you wrap it around. Okay, then we'll peel off the backing. Uh, take your pick tool would be handy for this. There we go. So much easier. <laughs> That's why I had it on the list, you guys. All right, so take your pick tool. Make sure that you use that puppy. Now we can wrap this around, center it, stick it down, slide it off, check our card going in the right direction. Slide it back on. And then this piece just gets put on with a dimensional and you can use your new black dimensionals. Whoa, I'm really glowing now. This window needs to be shut. I'm so sorry, you guys. Stick a couple on the back there and we'll go like this. You know what, let's put it right in the middle. And then we've got these fun embellishments. These are one of my favorites. I love them because you can color them with blends if you would like. In fact, let's do that. Let's take our mossy meadow. Yeah, let's take our light mossy meadow. This is a um, decision I'm making right at the last minute here. And there's color over the top. We might need the darker mossy meadow, although this is working. It's a very light, light green. Oh, it's so pretty, you guys. Hopefully the light from the window that's being all funky on us is not, um, here, let's do a, well, let's just do those for now and I can finish the card later because we're running out of time. But I would decorate the inside the same way I did the um, other card that had these on the inside. So I'd put a couple, probably put one more there and then I would, I would also add the ones, the amount that I had on the inside of this one. Okay, so let's put those all out so you can see them. In fact, let's leave this one open with the belly band next to it. And we'll zoom out so you can take a quick peek at all of them together. I might even have to get my head out of the way here. Hang on a minute. There's that one. There's this one. So we're gonna draw for a prize, you guys. So if you haven't commented yet, make sure you're gonna do that pretty soon here. And we have one more card. This one here. We'll just put this one next to like that. Will that work? That'll work, right? Okay, so those are the samples that I shared with you. It's okay that you're late, Cindy. Glad that you chimed in. Um, now I'm going to get my computer here set up 
so that we can do comment picker. So I'm going to my computer now. <laughs> That'll get rid of my really white glowy head. Hang on. Okay. Oh, but my white glowy head is still in the corner. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna refresh this page. And when I refresh it, any comments that are um, in at this point, this is, you guys get to qualify for the prize drawing, okay? So we're gonna go ahead to our videos, click on that section. That's my page, by the way. If you didn't know where you were at, you're on uh, Stamp Your Art Out with Rachel's Facebook page. And there's our live video. Let's pull the link to that and bring that into um, a website that I use called uh, Comment Picker. So let's paste that. Let's do a search. All right, so somebody's gonna get one of these awesome stamp sets today. Sorry, there we go. All right, we have 109 unique commenters, which means that there's 109 of you who have commented. So we're gonna click the start button and who is gonna be the winner today? By the way, if your name is drawn and you are not in the US, I will mail you one of the cards instead. I can't mail you the product. Mary Ellen Ryan, yay. Oh, from Montana, that was her comment, so that will help. I'm gonna click on your name, Mary Ellen, and if you show up on this next page where we can find your comment easily, then I can message you. If not, you need to reach me. Um, you have two weeks to contact me for your prize. Good, there it showed up, I'm so excited. Let's go back to drawing for um, the winner from, oops, wrong page. Drawing for a winner from the Come Sail Away which was a few weeks ago. This one is going to um, receive the prize that we had last time. We had some sail away trinkets and some beautiful ribbon. And oh my gosh, Rachel, your face is just pure white now. <laughs> I hope that those of you that read my lips can still read them. Sorry about that. We had 153 people comment, so all of those 153 people get a chance at this prize. I'll show the prize on my desk in just a minute. Um, again, if you are from out of the U.S., I will mail you a card instead. The winner is MK Gun. I recognize your name. So hopefully um, her comment, oh, see, it's not linking to her comment. That's the problem. Sometimes it does link to the actual person's comment and sometimes it doesn't. And I won't be able to go through 504 comments to find you, MK. So make sure that you contact me if you see this or if a friend of, you, a friend of yours knows and, and messages you. But let's show those prizes again really quick on the table. All right. So MK gets the ribbon, which is that my favorite ribbon ever. You can color this with blends too. Um, it's the white silver edge metallic ribbon. And then of course the sail away trinkets. And they are just so cute. We have little ship's wheels and anchors in there. And then the prize winner uh, for this week got this stamp set, yay. And then next week we'll draw for the second stamp set winner. Again, I am going to be um, coming to you live next week. I know that Labor Day weekend is in between there. <laughs> wow, I am so bright right now. Um, Labor Day weekend is in between there. So I hope you all have a restful um, long weekend if you get to take that Monday off. My kids are going back to school on Tuesday, and so I will be ready to broadcast to you without having to have them be super quiet in the house. Um, I'll be ready to broadcast to you next week. That would be September, I didn't write it down. I don't know, September 4th? It, I think it's the start of the holiday catalog. I think that's the day that the holiday catalog begins. The day that you can, <laughs> gosh, that's bright. The day that you can, um, there we go. The day that you can uh, order from that is September 4th. I can't think if there's anything. Oh, I was going to tell you why you can get $155 worth of product for $99 because there's a special that's ending August 31st. And so you'll want to make sure that you take advantage of that if you're interested. You're officially becoming a demonstrator, but 95-ish percent of the people that get the starter kit get it for themselves. And then they just get the discount continually month after month and they have fun on the demonstrator side of things. So don't feel pressure to get the starter kit and do a business with it. You don't have to, although I love it. I love having this as my, my business and it really helps my family out. So, all right. So anyways, so visit me next week and make sure I'll, I'll have links in the description of this video for um, more information about the starter kit special and then um, links to, of course, my website and all that. 
If you do not have a demonstrator, I invite you to shop with me at stampyourartout.com and um, there's a shop button there. And if you do have a demonstrator, shop through them. They would love to get an order from you. Um, and then of course, if you are a demonstrator, get some of this stuff, it's really cool. <laughs> All right, I'll let you guys go. Take care, everyone. Take you, uh, now, thanks for joining me and I'd like y'all to go and stamp your art out. Bye-bye.